Coronation Street from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Coronation Street is Britain's longest running television soap opera, which was first broadcast on Friday the 9th of December 1960 in the Granada region of ICV. The programme is consistently the highest rated programme on British television. The show was created by Tony Warren and is produced by Granada Television, now branded ITV Productions, holder of the ITV franchise for the northwest of England, and was initially shown only in that area. Between December 1960 and March 1961, other ITV franchises began to broadcast the programme, becoming fully networked on the 3rd of March 1961, when it started to be aired by ATV, the only remaining franchise. Coronation Street, commonly nicknamed and written as Corrie, or The Street, is set in a fictional street in Weatherfield, a fictional suburb of Manchester, England, based loosely on Salford. The programme examines the lives of the residents of the fictional Northern Street, who are predominantly working class. Coronation Street itself consists of a row of seven early 20th century terraced houses on its northern side, with a public house, the Rover's Return Inn, at one end, and a corner shop at the other. The southern side of the street consists of a factory, two shop units, a garage, and three houses, all constructed in the late 1980s. The programme also incorporates the residents of neighbouring streets, including Rosamond Street, Victoria Street, and Viaduct Street. As of 2007, Coronation Street is broadcast in Britain at 7.30pm and 8.30pm each Monday, and 7.30pm Wednesday, Friday and Sunday on terrestrial network ITV1. In the Republic of Ireland, Coronation Street is simulcast on TV3. Repeat episodes and specials can be seen on ITV1's sister channel, ITV2, with an omnibus edition shown on Saturday and Sunday afternoons. Since its launch, the programme has aired in many countries worldwide, including Canada, Australia, Belgium and Holland. The working title of the show was Florizel Street, but a tea lady named Annis remarked that Florizel sounded like a brand of disinfectant, so the name was changed. The choice of new name was between Jubilee Street and Coronation Street, with Granada executives Harry Latham, Harry Elton and H.V. Kershaw deciding on the latter. Section 1. Background to Coronation Street Coronation Street is known on occasions for its light humour and comic characters, which carry on traditions of northern variety, with many of the show's actors having worked extensively in repertory theatre, notably the Oldham Rep. The programme is also recognised as a drama serial, and its storylines have covered diverse topics and themes. See the article entitled Storylines of Coronation Street for details. For a number of years, Coronation Street became known for the portrayal of strong female characters, with characters like Ina Sharples, Annie Walker, Elsie Tanner and Hilda Ogden becoming household names during the 1960s. Tony Warren created a programme that was largely matrifocal, which some commentators have put down to the female dominant environment in which he grew up. The 1970s and 1980s saw the rise and development of characters such as Bette Lynch, Rita Fairclough, Vera Duckworth and Ivy Tilsley, who also fitted the strong woman mould. While a wider view of the community is now presented within the programme, its matrifocal nature is still in evidence with contemporary characters like Eileen Grimshaw, Karen MacDonald and newcomer Carla Connor. Section 2. Characters and Characterizations For further information, see the article List of Characters from Coronation Street. Since 1960, Coronation Street has featured hundreds of characters, whose popularity with viewers and critics has differed. The original cast was created by Tony Warren, with the figures of Ina Sharples, played by Violet Carson, Elsie Tanner, played by Patricia Phoenix, and Annie Walker, played by Doris Speed, as central characters. These three women remained with the show for 20 years or more, and became archetypes of British soap opera, often being emulated by other serials, with Ina, caretaker of the Glad Tidings Mission Hall, as the street's busybody, battle axe, and self-proclaimed moral voice, Elsie as the tart with a heart, who was constantly hurt by men in the search of true love, and Annie Walker, landlady of the Rover's Return Inn, who had delusions of grandeur, 
and saw herself to be better than other residents of Coronation Street. Of the original cast, only one character remains today, Ken Barlow, played by William Roach. Barlow entered the storyline as a young radical, reflecting the youth of 1960s Britain, where figures like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and the model Twiggy were to reshape the concepts of youthful rebellion. Though the rest of the original Barlow family were killed off, Ken has remained the constant link throughout 46 years of Coronation Street. 1964 saw the introduction of Stan and Hilda Ogden, portrayed as the communist family on the street, with Hilda, played by Jean Alexander, becoming one of the most famous British soap characters of all time. In a 1982 poll, Hilda was voted the fourth most recognisable woman in Britain after the Queen Mother, Queen Elizabeth II and Diana Princess of Wales. Hilda's most famous attributes were her penny, hair curlers and the muriel in her living room with three flying duck ornaments. Hilda Ogden's final episode on 25th of December 1987 remains the highest rated episode of Coronation Street ever with nearly 27 million viewers. Bette Lynch, played by Julie Goodyear, first appeared in 1966 before becoming a regular in 1970. She would go on to become one of the most famous Corrie characters ever standing as the central character of the show from 1987 until departing in 1995, often being dubbed as Queen of the Street by the media. Coronation Street and its characters often rely heavily on archetypes, with the characterisation of some of its current cast being based loosely on past characters. Blanche Hunt, played by Maggie Jones, embodies the role of the acid-tongued busybody once held by Ema Sharples, Sally Webster, played by Sally Whittaker, has grown snobbish, much like Annie Walker, while a number of the programme's female characters mirror the vulnerability of Elsie Tanner and Beth Lynch. Other recurring archetypes have included the war veteran, Albert Tatlock, Percy Sugden, the bumbling retail manager, Leonard Swindley, Reg Holdsworth, Norris Cole, and the perennial losers, Stan and Hilda Ogden, Jack and Vera Duckworth. Section 3. History the 1960s kitchen sink drama. The serial began on the 9th of December 1960 and was not initially a critical success. Granada commissioned only 13 episodes and some inside the company doubted the show would last its planned production run. Despite the negativity, viewers were immediately drawn to the serial, won over by Coronation Street's focus on the plight of ordinary folk. The programme also made use of Northern English language and dialect, Affectionate local terms like Eerchuk, Nalt and Bayek became widely heard on British television for the first time. Storylines were based on the experiences of families and their interaction, and on relationships between individuals of different ages, classes and social structures. Stories also addressed how working class people made a caste system in their own mini-society and excommunicated others they did not wish to associate with. In reality, many of the people deemed too common like Elsie Tanner or Stan and Hilda Ogden, were of the exact same stock as those who were judging them. Early episodes told the story of student Kenneth Barlow, who had won a place at university and thus found his background something of an embarrassment. The character is one of the few to have experienced life outside of Coronation Street, and in some ways predicts the decline of similar communities. In a 1961 episode, Barlow declares, you can't go on just thinking about your own street these days. We're living with people on the other side of the world. There's more to worry about than Elsie Tanner and her boyfriends. Also at the centre of many early stories was Ina Sharples, and her friends, timid Minnie Caldwell, played by Margaret Bryant, and bespectacled Martha Longhurst, played by Lynn Carroll. The trio were likened to the Greek chorus, and the three witches in William Shakespeare's Macbeth, as they would sit in the snug bar of the Rover's Return passing judgment over family, neighbours, and frequently each other. Headstrong Ina often clashed with Elsie Tanner, whom she believed espoused a rather disgusting set of morals. Elsie resented Ina's interference and gossip, which most of the time had little basis in reality. In September 1961, Coronation Street reached number one in the television ratings, and remained there for the rest of the year. Earlier in 1961, a television audience measurement, TAM, showed that 75% of available viewers, 15 million, tuned into Corrie. By 1964, the programme had over 20 million regular viewers, 
with ratings peaking on the 2nd of December 1964 with 21.36 million viewers. Storylines which proved popular with viewers included the following. A mystery poison pen letter received by Elsie Tanner. The 1962 marriage of Ken Barlow and Valerie Tatlock. The death of Martha Longhurst in 1964. The birth of the Barlow twins in 1965. Elsie Tanner's wedding to Steve Tanner as well as a train crashing from the viaduct, both in 1967, the murder of Steve Tanner in 1968, and a coach crash in 1969. In spite of rising popularity with viewers, Coronation Street was criticised by some for its outdated portrayal of the urban working class and its representation of a community that was a nostalgic fantasy. After the first episode in 1960, the Daily Mirror printed, The programme is doomed from the outset. For well, there is little reality in this new serial, which apparently we have to suffer twice a week. By 1967, critics were suggesting that the programme no longer reflected life in 1960s Britain, but reflected how life was in the 1950s. Granada hurried to update the programme, with the hope of introducing more issue-driven stories, including drugs, sex, homosexuality and pregnancy, but all of these ideas were dropped for fear of upsetting viewers. Coronation Street would continue to receive criticism of being out of touch and out of date for the rest of its existence. The 1970s The show's production team was tested when many core cast members left the programme in the early 1970s. When Arthur Leslie died suddenly in 1970, his character, Rover's landlord Jack Walker, died with him. Anne Reid quit as Valerie Barlow and was killed off in 1971 electrocuting herself with a faulty hairdryer. Ratings reached a low of 8 million in February 1973, and Pat Phoenix quit as Elsie Tanner, Violet Carson, in Sharples, was written out for most of the year through illness, and Doris Speed, Annie Walker, took two months' leave. ITV daytime soap Crossroads saw a marked increase in viewers at this time, as its established cast, such as Meg Richardson, played by Noel Gordon, grew in popularity. These sudden departures forced the writing team to quickly develop characters who had previously stood in the background. The roles of Bette Lynch, Deirdre Hunt, played by Anne Kirkbride, Rita Littlewood, played by Barbara Knox, and Mavis Riley, played by Thelma Barlow, were built up between 1972 and 1973, with characters such as Gail Potter, played by Helen Worth, Blanche Hunt, played by Patricia Cutts and Maggie Jones, and Vera Duckworth, Elizabeth Dawn, first appearing in 1974. These characters would remain at the centre of the programme for many years. The 1970s was also the decade when Coronation Street began to include more comedy in its storylines, at the insistence of new producer Bill Podmore, who joined in 1976, having worked on Granada comedy productions prior to his appointment. Stan and Hilda Ogden were often at the centre of overtly funny storylines, with other comic characters including Eddie Yates, played by Jeffrey Hughes, Fred G, played by Fred Feast, and Jack Duckworth, played by William Tarmy, all making their first appearances. In 1976, Pat Phoenix returned to her role as Elsie Tanner, and after a spate of ill health, Violet Carson returned as Ina. Coronation Street's stalwart cast slotted back into the programme alongside the newcomers, examining new relationships between characters of different ages and backgrounds. Eddie Yates became the Ogden's lodger, Gail Potter and Susie Birchall moved in with Elsie, Mike Baldwin, played by Johnny Briggs, arrived in 1976 as the tough factory boss, and Annie Walker reigned in the Rovers with her trio of staff, Bette Lynch, Betty Turpin, and Fred G. Storylines which proved popular with viewers included The Death of Val Barlow, A Warehouse Fire in 1975, The 1977 Birth of Tracy Langton, The Murder of Ernest Bishop in 1978, A Lorry Crashing into the Rovers' Return in 1979, and the marriage of Brian Tilsley and Gail Potter, also in 1979. Coronation Street had little competition within its prime time slot, and certain critics suggested that the programme had grown complacent, moving away from socially viable storylines, and again presenting a dated view of working class life. The 1980s Between 1980 and 1989, Coronation Street underwent some of the biggest changes since its launch. By May 1984, Ken Barlow stood as the only original cast member after the departures of Ina Sharples, Annie Walker, Elsie Tanner and Albert Tatlock. In 1983, anti-hero Lynn Fairclough 
one of the show's central male characters since 1961, was killed off, and in 1984, Bernard Ewens, Stan Ogden, died. While the press predicted the end of Corrie, H.V. Kershaw reminded viewers that there are no stars in Coronation Street. Writers drew on the show's many archetypes, with previously established characters stepping into the roles left by the original cast. The Duckworths moved into number 9 in 1983 and slipped into the role once held by the Ogdens. Percy Sugden appeared in 1983 and took over the grumpy war veteran role from Albert Tatlock. The question of who would take over the Rovers' return after Annie Walker's 1983 exit was answered in 1985, when Bette Lynch, who also mirrored the vulnerability and strength of Elsie, was installed as landlady. The decade saw many weddings. Ken Barlow married Deirdre Langton on the 27th of July 1981. The episode was watched by over 24 million viewers, more ITV viewers than the wedding of Prince Charles and Lady Diana two days later. Alf Roberts married Audrey Potter in 1985. Kevin Webster married Sally Seddon in 1986. And Bette Lynch married Alec Gilroy in 1987 with 1988 seeing the marriages of Ivy Tilsley and Don Brennan, and Derek Wilson and Mavis Riley. The arrival of Channel 4 and its edgy new serial Brookside in 1982 was one of the biggest changes for Coronation Street, as well as the BBC's new primetime soap opera EastEnders in 1985. While ratings for Coronation Street remained consistent throughout the decade, EastEnders regularly obtained higher viewing figures. With primetime competition, Corrie was again seen as being old-fashioned, with the introduction of the normal Clayton family in 1985 being a failure with viewers. Between 1988 and 1989, many aspects of the show were modernised by new producer David Lidament. A new exterior set had been built in 1982, with 1989 seeing its redevelopment to include new houses and shops. Production techniques were also changed with a new studio being built and the inclusion of more location filming. New pressures also saw introduction of the third weekly episode on the 20th of October 1989, broadcast Friday at 7.30pm. The 1980s featured some of the most prominent storylines in the programme's history, such as Deirdre Barlow's affair with Mike Baldwin in 1983, the first soap storyline to receive widespread media attention. The feud between Ken Barlow and Mike Baldwin would continue for many years, with Mike even marrying Ken's daughter Susan in 1986. Other storylines included a fire at the Rovers' return in 1986, and Rita Fairclough's psychological abuse at the hands of Alan Bradley and his subsequent death under the wheels of a Blackpool tram. The show's highest rated episode, 26.6 million viewers, came in 1987, when Hilda Ogden left the show. Other popular stories included the birth of Nicky Tilsley in 1980, Elsie Tanner's departure and Stan Ogden's funeral in 1984, the birth of Sarah Louise Tilsley in 1987, and Brian Tilsley's murder in 1989. New characters were introduced, such as Kevin and Sally Webster, Curly Watts, Martin Platt, Reg Holdsworth, and the MacDonald family. The 1990s In spite of updated sets and production changes, Coronation Street still received criticism. In 1992, Chairman of the Broadcasting Standards Council, Lord Rees Mogg, criticised the low representation of ethnic minorities and the programme's portrayal of the cosy familiarity of a bygone era. Some newspapers ran headlines such as Coronation Street Shuts Out Blacks, The Times, and Put Colour in the Street, Daily Mirror. Patrick Stoddart of The Times wrote, The millions who watch Coronation Street, and who will continue to do so despite Lord Rees Mogg, no real life when they see it. In the most confident and accomplished soap opera television has ever seen. Black and Asian characters had appeared in minor roles over the years, but it wasn't until 1999 that the show featured its first regular non-white family, the Desai family. New characters Des and Steph Barnes moved into one of the new houses in 1990, being dubbed by the media as yuppies. Raquel Wollstonehume, played by Sarah Lancashire, first appeared in 1991 and went on to become one of the most popular characters ever. The MacDonald family were developed, and the fiery relationships between Liz, Jim, Steve and Andy interested viewers after an uncertain start. Other popular newcomers were Maud Grimes, Roy Cropper, Judy and Gary Mallett, Fred Elliott and Ashley Peacock. The amount of slapstick humour in storylines increased during the 1990s, 
with comic characters such as Reg Holdsworth. Popular storylines in the early part of the decade included the death of Katie MacDonald in 1991, Mike Baldwin's wedding to Alma Sedgwick in 1992, Tommy Duckworth being sold by his father Terry in 1993, and the rise of Tanya Pooley, played by Eva Pope, between 1994 and 1995. In 1997, Brian Park took over as producer, with the idea of promoting young characters as opposed to the older cast. On his first day, he axed the characters of Derek Wilson, Don Brennan, Percy Sugden, Bill Webster, Billy Williams, and Maureen Holdsworth. Thelma Barlow, who played Derek's wife, Mavis, was angered by the sacking of her co-star and resigned. The production team also lost some of its key writers when Barry Hill, Adele Rose, and Julian Roach all resigned. In line with Park's suggestion, younger characters were introduced. Nick Tilsley was recast, played by Adam Rickett, single mother Zoe Tattersall first appeared, and the Battersby's moved into number five. Storylines focused on tackling issues such as drug dealers, eco-warriors, religious cults, and a transsexual. Park quit in 1998 after deciding that he had done what he intended to do. He maintained that his biggest achievement was the introduction of Hayley Patterson, the first transsexual character on British soap. Viewers were somewhat alienated by the new look Coronation Street, and the media voiced disapproval. Having received criticism of being too out of touch, Corrie now struggled to emulate the more modern Brookside and EastEnders. In the Daily Mirror, Victor Lewis Smith wrote, Apparently it doesn't matter that this is a first-class soap opera, superbly scripted and flawlessly performed by a seasoned repertory company. One of Coronation Street's biggest storylines occurred in 1998, with Deirdre Rashid being wrongly imprisoned after a relationship with con man John Lindsay. Nineteen million viewers watched Deirdre being sent to prison, and Free the Weatherfield One campaigns sprung up in a media frenzy. Prime Minister Tony Blair even passed comment on Deirdre's sentencing in Parliament. Deirdre was freed after three weeks, with Granada stating that they had always intended for her to be released, in spite of the media interest. The 2000s On the 8th of December 2000, the show celebrated its 40th year by broadcasting a live, hour-long episode. The Prince of Wales made a cameo in the episode, appearing in a pre-recorded segment as himself in an ITV News Bulletin report, presented by Trevor MacDonald. Earlier in the year, 13-year-old Sarah Platt, played by Tina O'Brien, had fallen pregnant and gave birth to a baby girl, Bethany, on the 4th of June, with the episode where Gail was told of her daughter's pregnancy being watched by 15 million viewers. The year also saw the programme's first two-hander between Curly and Raquel Watts. From 1999 to 2001, Jane McNaught was Coronation Street's producer and received harsh criticism from both viewers and critics. In an attempt to compete with EastEnders, issue-led storylines were introduced, such as Toya Battersby's rape, Roy and Hayley Cropper abducting their foster child, Sarah Platt's internet chatroom abduction, and Alma Halliwell's death of cervical cancer. Such storylines were unpopular with viewers and ratings dropped and in October 2001, McNaught was abruptly moved to another Granada department, and Carolyn Reynolds took over. Corrie continued to struggle in the ratings, with EastEnders introducing some of its strongest stories. In 2002, Kieran Roberts was appointed as producer, and attempted to reintroduce gentle storylines and humour, after deciding that the street shouldn't try and compete with other soaps. In 2002, one of Coronation Street's best-known storylines began, which culminated in 2003. Gail Platt married Richard Hillman, played by Brian Capron, a financial advisor, who would go on to leave Dougie Ferguson to die, murder his ex-wife Patricia, attempt to murder his mother-in-law, Audrey Roberts, murder Maxine Peacock, and attempt to murder Emily Bishop. After confessing to the murder of Maxine and his ex-wife, Hillman attempted to kill Gail, her children Sarah and David, and her granddaughter Bethany, by driving them into a canal. The storyline received massive press attention, and viewing figures peaked at 19.4 million, with Hillman dubbed a serial killer by the media. In 2003, Todd Grimshaw began to question his sexuality, becoming Corrie's first regular homosexual character after years of criticism about non-representation. The character of Karen MacDonald, played by Saran Jones, was developed with her fiery marriage to Steve and warring with Tracy Barlow. 
In 2004, Coronation Street retconned the Baldwin family when Mike's nephew, Danny Baldwin, and his wife, Frankie, moved to the area from Essex with their two sons, Jamie and Warren. Until this time, Mike Baldwin had been portrayed as an only child, with his father appearing in the programme between 1980 and 1982, confirming the fact. Between 2000 and 2007, a range of storylines have been featured, such as the bigamy of Peter Barlow, Maya Sharma's revenge on former lover Dev Allahan, Katie Harris murdering her father and subsequently committing suicide, Charlie Stubbs's psychological abuse of Shelley Unwin, the deaths of Mike Baldwin and Fred Elliott, the murder of Charlie Stubbs, and the discovery of an unexploded World War II bomb in the back garden of Number 4 Coronation Street. Section 4. Production Broadcast Format Between the 9th of December 1960 and the 3rd of March 1961, Coronation Street was broadcast twice weekly, on Monday and Friday. During this period, the Friday episode was broadcast live, with the Monday episode being pre-recorded 15 minutes later. When the programme went fully networked on the 3rd of March 1961, broadcast days changed to Monday and Wednesday. The last regular episode to be shown live aired on the 3rd of February 1961. From episode 1 until 19th of November 1969, the programme was broadcast in black and white. Broadcast switched to colour from the 24th of November 1969, but in October 1970 a technician's strike at a film developing company affected the entire ITV network and virtually all the programming on ITV had to return to using black and white, including Coronation Street. The strike was resolved in early 1971 and the last black and white episode aired on the 8th of February 1971. Since this date, the serial has aired in colour, except for the opening sequence of the 40th anniversary episode, which began in black and white, although this was done for effect, not as a necessity. Theme music The show's theme music, a solo cornet piece, with clarinet and double bass accompaniment, reminiscent of northern band music, was written by Eric Spear and has been only slightly modified since its debut. Sets the main article for this section is entitled Coronation Street Sets. As befitting the soap opera genre, Coronation Street is made up of individual housing units plus communal areas. A news agent, the cabin, a small cafe, Roy's Rolls, a general grocery shop, D&S Allahan's, a factory, Underworld, and a public house, the Rovers Return Inn, which is the main meeting place for characters on the programme. From 1960 until 1968, all interactions on the outside street were filmed on a sound stage, with the houses reduced in scale by three quarters and constructed from wood. In 1968, Granada built an outside set, which was not all that different from the interior version previously used, with the wooden facades from the studio simply being erected on the new site. In 1982, a full-size exterior street was built in the Granada back lot, constructed from reclaimed salt of brick. The set was updated in 1989 with the construction of a new factory, two shop units, and three modern semi-detached houses on the south side of Coronation Street. Between 1989 and 1999, the Granada Studios tour allowed members of the public the opportunity to visit the set. The exterior set was extended and updated in 1999 to include a medical centre and takeaway on Rosamond Street, the newly built Victoria Street, housing three shops, two houses and a builder's yard, and, to obscure one of the Granada Tower blocks, a new viaduct on Rosamond Street. The viaduct is actually a facade with an optical illusion to make it look complete. Access to the outdoor set is gained from a small shop unit in Viaduct Street, Turner's Joinery. The unit also leads to the green room. The majority of interior scenes are shot in the adjoining purpose-built studio. Production staff. Coronation Street's creator, Tony Warren, wrote the first 13 episodes of the programme in 1960 and continued to write for the programme intermittently until 1976. He still retains links with Coronation Street, often advising on storylines. H.V. Kershaw, Harry Kershaw, was the script editor for Coronation Street when the programme began in 1960, working alongside Tony Warren. Kershaw was also a script writer for the programme, and the show's producer between 1962 and 1971. 
he remains the only person, along with John Finch, to have held the three posts of script editor, writer, and producer. Kershaw continued to write for the programme until his retirement in January 1988. Adele Rose was the longest serving Coronation Street writer, completing 455 scripts between 1961 and 1998. She went on to create Biker Grove. Michael Apted, best known for the Up series of documentaries, was a director on the programme in the early 1960s. This period of his career marked the first of his many collaborations with writer Jack Rosenthal. Phil Podmore was the show's longest serving producer. By the time he stepped down in 1988, he had completed 13 years at the production helm. Nicknamed the Godfather by the tabloid press, he was renowned for his tough, uncompromising style and was feared by both crew and cast alike. He is probably most famous for sacking Peter Adamson, the show's Len Fairclough, in 1983. Some of the script writers have transcended the show to become notable for other work. Jack Rosenthal, the acclaimed television dramatist, noted for such plays as Bar Mitzvah Boy, began his career on the show, writing over 150 episodes between 1961 and 1969. Paul Abbott was a story editor on the programme in the 1980s and began writing episodes in 1989, but left in 1993 to produce Cracker, for which he later wrote, before creating his own highly acclaimed dramas such as Touching Evil and Shameless. Russell T. Davis was briefly a storyliner on the programme in the mid-1990s, also writing the script for the direct-to-video special Viva Las Vegas. He too has become a noted writer of his own high-profile television drama programmes, including Queer as Folk and the 2005 revival of Doctor Who. Jimmy McGovern also wrote some episodes. Section 5. Scheduling Coronation Street in the UK For 47 years, Coronation Street has remained at the centre of ITV1's primetime schedule. The programme is currently shown in five episodes on four evenings a week on ITV1. From the 9th of December 1960 until the 27th of February 1961, the programme was shown in two episodes broadcast Monday and Friday at 7pm. Schedules were changed and from the 3rd of March 1961 to the 18th of October 1989, the programme was shown in two episodes broadcast Monday and Wednesday at 7.30pm. The third weekly episode was introduced on the 20th of October 1989, broadcast on Friday at 7.30pm. 1996 saw the introduction of the fourth weekly episode, broadcast Sunday at 7.30pm. The second Monday episode was introduced in 2002, broadcast at 8.30pm, to usher in the return of Bette Lynch. This episode was used intermittently during the popular Richard Hillman storyline, but since 2003, the Monday 8.30pm episode has become fully scheduled. Additional episodes have been aired during the weekly schedule of ITV1 at certain times, notably in 2004 when, between the 22nd of November and the 26th of November, eight episodes were shown. As the Extra Monday episode used to be for special storylines, an Extra Friday episode is occasionally used. Coronation Street Overseas Coronation Street is also shown in many countries worldwide, being the centre of the TV schedule in Ireland, and is aired on independent television station TV3 Ireland, which simulcasts with ITV. In Canada, episodes of Coronation Street air on CBC television. As of 2007, episodes appear on CBC about eight and a half months after their UK air date. It moved from a daytime slot on CBC to primetime in 2004. CBC Country Canada, a digital television service operated by CBC, broadcasts older episodes as Corrie Classics. The 2002 edition of the Guinness Book of Records recognises the 1,144 episodes sold to CBC-owned Saskatoon, Saskatchewan TV station CBKST by Granada TV on the 31st of May 1971 to be the largest number of TV shows ever purchased in one transaction. The programme was shown in Australia during the 1960s to some success, but was off-air by the 1970s. The series later moved to UK TV, where it is shown in half-hour instalments, with episodes around 18 months behind the UK. The series is also currently shown in New Zealand, on Television New Zealand's TV1. In New Zealand, 
the show consistently rates in the top 10 programmes nationally. Hour-long episodes are shown at 7.30pm on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Corry Street catch-ups are often scheduled on Wednesdays to prevent falling further behind. Episodes are around 11 months behind those broadcast in the UK. In the early 1970s, some episodes were shown on WGBH Channel 2, the public television station in Boston, Massachusetts, USA. In the early 1980s, USA Network aired Corrie on weekends, but only briefly. The Trio Channel aired a few episodes of the serial as part of a special interest programming project, but a concerted effort to air it in the American market has never materialised. American viewers in parts of the northern US can view Coronation Street telecasts on CBC. In particular, cable TV subscribers in places including Seattle, Buffalo, parts of Michigan and Plattsburgh are able to view the programme on CBC affiliates. Other Americans near the Canadian border can view the programme via over-the-air reception from nearby CBC transmitters. Dutch broadcaster Vara showed 428 subtitled episodes on Netherlands TV between 1967 and 1975. According to Granada, Coronation Street had been popular in the latter part of the 1960s in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Holland, Hong Kong, Nigeria, Singapore, Gibraltar, Greece, Sweden and many other countries. In 2006, the small network Vitaya started broadcasting Coronation Street for viewers in Belgium, with episodes aired roughly two years behind the UK. In the UAE, episodes of Coronation Street are aired two and a half weeks after their UK showing. Section 6. Spin-offs Granada launched one spin-off in 1965, Pardon the Expression, following the story of clothing store manager Leonard Swindley, played by Arthur Lowe, after he left Weatherfield. Swindley's management experience was tested when he was appointed assistant manager at a fictional department store, Dobson and Hawks. Granada produced two series of the spin-off, which ended in 1966. In 1968, Arthur Lowe returned as Leonard Swindley in Turn Out the Lights, a sequel to Pardon the Expression. It ran for just six episodes before it was cancelled. In 1999, six special episodes of Coronation Street were produced, following the story of Steve MacDonald, Vicky MacDonald, Bette Gilroy and Reg Holdsworth in Brighton. This spin-off was subtitled The Rover Returns and released on VHS tape. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation Licence, available at www.gnu.org forward slash copyleft forward slash fdl dot html